it's helpful to understand a little about how your lungs work. So let's begin. When you take a breath, air and oxygen pass from your mouth and nose, through your trachea, and into your lungs. Your lungs carry the oxygen through small tubes called bronchioles, and then to the alveoli. The alveolus is where the oxygen meets with the bloodstream. Oxygen is provided to the blood and carbon dioxide is released back into the alveoli. As you breathe out, the carbon dioxide gas goes out through your lungs and then your mouth and nose. The lungs are divided into lobes. There are three lobes on your right side and two on your left. The lungs also have a large supply of lymph nodes. The lymph nodes are small round masses of tissue that filter the blood and carry fluid and waste products through the lymphatic vessels. Most often, lung cancer is the reason that you need to have part of your lung removed. Lung cancer starts in the cells lining your lungs. Cancer cells grow faster and look abnormal in comparison to your healthy cells. The cancer cells also release chemicals that cause new blood vessels to form. The cells continue to grow and eventually can be seen as a tumor on imaging tests. As we get down here, right here it is. Wow. Oh, yeah. Wow. The cancer cells can spread or metastasize to other parts of the lung and body. The stage of your cancer is determined by the size of the tumor and if there is spread to other areas. This includes nearby lymph nodes. The lymph nodes can be in your lungs and within your chest cavity between the lungs. The stages range from one, where there are some abnormal cells lining the airway, to stage four, where the tumors have spread throughout the body. Your doctor will develop a treatment plan based on your stage and other health considerations. Please refer to your booklet, which goes into more detail on each stage of cancer. After examining you and your records, your surgeon will discuss the surgical approach that is most appropriate for you. The type of procedure that you will need depends on the location and size of your tumor or to the extent of blockage or fluid around the lung. A wedge resection removes a small pie-shaped section of the lung. A segment resection removes a slightly larger section of the lung, but not an entire lobe. A lobectomy removes an entire lung lobe. The other lobes on that same side remain. When an entire lung lobe is removed, the rest of the lung hyperinflates to fill up the space. A pneumonectomy is a procedure that removes the entire lung on one side. This is rarely done. Your surgeon would have discussed the surgical approach proposed for you prior to your surgery. There's really two basic approaches. One approach is to perform what is called a thoracotomy. This involves an incision on your back or on your side. That's a classic incision. It involves cutting through the muscles that we use to breathe with, the chest wall muscles, and going between the ribs. But generally, we have to spread or even remove a piece of rib so we can get access, direct access, into the chest. The second approach is, a, is called video-assisted thoracic surgery, or VATS. And that involves making typically three half-inch incisions. They go between the ribs. They don't spread or affect the ribs or the nerves under the ribs. They don't cut the muscles on the chest wall. And that's why it has is, is been a big advance over the last 10 or 20 years, uh, because it minimizes the pain and trauma to the patient. Regardless of which of these techniques is right for you, there will also be incisions made near your ribs to accommodate tubes placed around your lung at the time of surgery. These tubes are to release any fluid or air that may build up immediately after the operation.